Hi everyone. I hope you're well and happy. <laughs> and um, thanks for stopping in and listening to me for a couple of minutes here now. I want to talk to you about the future of birth. All right. Uh, you know, I have been in birth now for 40 years. Actually, 2021 will be my 40th year in the realm of birth. And I, I've seen some changes for the good, some for not so much. But the change that's happening right now in birth is so timely and so pressing. And I don't feel like we're going into a new normal. Where I don't think there's anything normal about anywhere we're going, actually. I mean, we are going into the future. And the way I see it is we're going into the quantum, all right? Quantum birth and quantum caregivers is, is for me, what's lining up now, all right? And, and the word quantum has this connotation for me of, you know, a leap ahead, uh, evolution, all right? And that's why I'm here. I'm here for the evolution of this planet, all right? I, I do want to be a part of that. So, all right, um, <laughs> here's what's being brought to my door by women. First of all, I'm hearing we don't want to be managed we don't need to be managed, and it's infantilizing to, to continue to manage us, all right? We know how to give birth. We don't need a, a room of highly trained clinical professionals to give birth. In fact, that is probably a detriment to a woman giving birth organically and, and, and authentically, all right? Women are also saying that they resent the fact that they are not being listened to, that they're... Uh, instinctual responses are being overlooked or ignored. I, I hear women saying we want affirmation for, for our pregnancies, but we're getting anxiety. We want support, but we're getting risk screening. All right. And the most important thing that we want is investment. We want to know that we are our caregiver's first priority. All right. We just want to be the first investment. Okay, now, there are many wonderful and amazingly connected midwives and doctors out there right now, and I salute them, all right? Some of them are my dear friends, and I feel like they're already practicing in a very quantum way. And, you know, if you come to my classes, you know that I tell great stories about great doctors, all right, who practice in, in ways that are just liberating to, to women. But despite that, that doesn't change the huge fact that many women still are managed, non-prioritized, ignored, and disappointed with their birthing experiences. All right, they want something different. And they want something different from their caregivers. So I am here to introduce the quantum quantum birth, that quantum paradigm. I've been talking about this for a while, all right? And I feel like now is the time, all right? It's the time that it's going to come through. And what is the quantum paradigm about? It is about investment, truly, all right? It, it is about raising the consciousness of birth, all right? you see, for uh, caregivers and for women. So I'm asking that the midwives and the doctors move over a little bit, all right, and, and share the platform with uh, what I call the birth keeper, all right? This is, a, this is a new calling, a new vocation that women have been calling in. All right, women who would really like somebody to accompany them during their birth, but not necessarily manage them. All right, the premise here for me is that birth is inherently not a clinical event, any more than sex would be inherently a clinical event. All right, I, I feel that normal, healthy women no, don't necessarily need clinical management or clinical care, really. If you want clinical care, you are pregnant, you shall have it, you shall have what you wish. But I see that many women are, are, not, are, are not satisfied, are not, don't even realize, aren't feeling that clinical care is even relevant in the birthing experience, all right? 
So I'm going to be introducing a birth keeper, someone who is not necessarily there to uh, give you clinical care but or, or manage manage your experience, but someone who is more of a mentor, someone to accompany you, someone who is a fountain of information and has had a wonderful midwifery education from which to base, all right, their um, offering of information. But this is also someone who can prioritize you as their first priority. This is someone who doesn't have to manage their license or worry about how they practice with their colleagues or worry about the system and protocols or things like that because this person is not a part of the system. All right. So actually, I'm going to be talking about the, the quantum birth keeper in our next little, little video in this set because today I want to really just talk about quantum. What is quantum birth about? So here we go. First of all, it's about nurturing. I mean, the hallmark of a quantum, quantum birthing experience is that you feel nurtured by your caregiver. And I feel like we, we don't do enough of, of the nurturing. Uh, you know, you can't teach nurturing, right? But you demonstrate it. So let's have more demonstrations of, of nurturing from our caregivers rather than education. Demonstrate rather than educate because education is wonderful. Information is, is amazing. But oftentimes the way information comes at pregnant people is in a, in a very um, hierarchical way, all right, from, from, through a power dynamic. And one of the things that we're not going to participate in in a quantum paradigm is a power dynamic. What we see in our culture today is a very hierarchical, top-down model of care, all right? That is a very technocratic model. And women, it, it's not working, okay? So equity, investment, these things are part of a quantum paradigm. Self-direction. Nurturing, as I said, see? So, what if we decided that we would have equitable behavior with our clients, all right? In other words, we're going to treat every person uniquely, not every person the same, all right? Not every person needs or wants the same thing. Yet that's, in many ways, what the system is actually striving for right now is to treat everyone the same. Everyone gets the same tests at the same time. And, and, and that's, just not, that's just not what women want, all right? Women wanted to be treated uniquely. That's what they're telling me, all right? And that's what I would want. And I don't want someone to, to manage me. I, I want someone to show me what my options are and then let me choose what I need for a transformational and successful experience. You see? I don't, I don't, I want, I want my options, of course. I want to know things. I want information. But oftentimes information is given in a very um, loaded way. Oftentimes what we teach people is what we think we would want or what we think that, as I said, what everyone needs. Let's go the distance and offer an equitable relationship with the, with the clients that we're working with, okay? So what does that mean? Well, I know that a woman is the expert about her body and her baby. And I will never know as much as she does about her body and her baby. And I will listen to her. And I will honor her instinctual responses. Okay? And I will offer her through my experience. See, that's, that's where I come in. Uh, I, I have a lot of experience. This, this is my ex area of expertise. So I'm going to bring that to the table. You're going to bring your area of expertise, and we're going to have a collaborative relationship, okay? All right? We're, we're going to have a relationship where I 
can offer you all kinds of information about options in birth and you choose what you need. See, this is what I like about equitable relationships. There's no power dynamic in them. All right. And that's, I think, a very evolutionary goal, all right, to get rid of some of the power or maybe all of the power dynamics that exist in birth today. Uh, see, women don't, this is what women are, are, are saying. I don't want this. It, all right. Hmm. Self-direction. You know, I feel that I'm a self-directed person and I, I don't want to be the only one in the equation that's self-directed. I mean, I don't want to give up my being self-directed, but I certainly don't want to be the only one. I want you as a client to be self-directed. And any time you take one step towards self-direction, I will elevate you. All right. I, I, it's common knowledge in medicine and birth culture today, healing, that the better the relational aspects are between two people, the fewer complications you'll see and the faster that healing will progress. So deeper relationships, creating time and space to have a deeper relationship with our clients. Now, midwives are great at that, and some doctors are, excel at that. I certainly have had doctors who did, all right? But that's not the norm. That's not what we're seeing here. This is the future now for us, okay, that we we become deeply connected with our clients. It's, it's not that, it, that time of, oh, you know, that aloof professionalism. I, I mean, I get it. We've done it. It's the leaves of last year's trees. And when the leaves fall off of the trees, we're not out there gluing them back on. Let them go. Something new will arrive, okay, in spring. I mean, that message has hit us for years and years, okay? So that time of aloofness with women and um, over-professionalism with them, you know, I'm looking for depth. I'm looking for meaningful relationships, I'm looking for a soul level connection with someone if they want it. And when women are pregnant, uh, however, what, however you want to language this, but when women are pregnant, this is the bottom line. The, the veils are thin between them and their deepest places. Deep stuff comes up, all right? And they, they, they delve into their souls, all right? And oftentimes we act as if the soul is not accessible to us and, and, and we don't want to go that deep. But women are calling for that. Women are hungry for that. If you're listening to me, you know what, I'm, you, you know what I mean. The veils are thin in pregnancy and in the whole childbirth continuum between a woman and her soul. And she is hungry for someone to share those deeper knowings with her. You see, when when you when you access your soul, your soul it makes it easy to expand your perspective, and you you know things, you know things. All right, those things come up, and they give you confidence and competence. Okay, in your birthing realm, and that's what women want. I think they want caregivers who inspire them to go deeper, and have those knowings. All right, and be confident and competent in their birthing experiences. They are asking caregivers not to need to be the center of their births. I'm going to say it again. They're asking caregivers not to need to be the center of a woman's birth. And I'm asking that too. Because I do see an awful lot about that, that the birth is directed by the caregiver. In fact, what is that meme that's out there? I don't know who to credit for it because it was anonymous, but it was a, a woman's greatest risk in childbirth today is her choice of caregiver. Wow. 
Why? Because the paradigm that the caregiver works in will direct a woman's birth. All right? Yeah. So, <laughs> what else? All right. So we've got the nurturing down, right? We've got the soul level connection. We've got the self-direction and respecting women's instinctual and uh, women's and partners, men and partners. Men and partners have instinctual responses to a woman's birth. Why aren't we listening to them? All right, that, that'll be another topic that we'll be going into in this little series. All right. So now I want to talk about trust. Trust and transparency is a huge part of this. All right. No hidden agendas. No power dynamics. Caregivers have, have eternally been trustworthy individuals that you could trust with your deepest experiences, whether it's a counselor, a healer, a doctor, a midwife, a nurse. Trusting, trusting that that person going back to having an investment in you. All right? And I think the reason... I think the reason that we're having so much trouble these days in the world with trust is is because we're not invested. Okay? We're or whatever we're invested in doesn't include the good of all. Right? I mean, trust is a global issue. I mean, there's lots of love in the world. Not so much trust. Lots of love, there could be more. Not so much trust. We, we, we seem to have lost our trust, okay? And, you know, I want to point out here that there's no one to blame here. You know, the, the venerable Michelle O'Dont speaks about birth uh, in a, such a very non-judgmental way. He says, when it comes to birth, we've lost our way. We've lost our way. Who could argue with that? All right. Oh. And there's no, there's no one that we would blame. There's no thing that happened that we would blame. It's just that we've lost our way. All right. And Odant talks also about what to do about it. More management and more drugs? No. <laughs> All right. A tighter grip on women? No. He talks about going back to square one. Now, what was square one? Midwives? No. No. Going back to, to birthing with the people who were most invested in you. All right. The people who had your best interests at heart, not theirs. Who was that? Your mom? <laughs> your aunties? Your sisters? Today, who, who has the most investment in that pregnant woman and child? Well, I think it's the, the partner, the father of the baby. I think we should be opening doors for the father and standing back, all right, so that, that the person who has the most investment in this family, all right, becomes the other most important person in the room. And so this is what we're going to see in this quantum paradigm. We're going to see the shift of the caregiver not being the center of the birth, but the mother and the partner mother and the father being the center of the birth, with the caregiver standing back, pretty far back. You know, when I was a young midwife, this is what women asked me to do. Somehow, I, I had the grace and the gratitude to realize that I was talking to many women who were having like their fifth, sixth, seventh babies, you know, the, the powers that be sent me to large women having large families. And I've had two children. I know a little. I've studied midwifery and been to births. I know a bit. All right. But what women asked me to do in a very tacit way, not 
in these words, but they asked me to step back. They asked me to change roles with almost everyone else in the room. And I did, and I found myself backing up and backing up and backing up until actually my place where I felt the most comfortable was on the perimeter, right? So I could, so I, I'm on the edge. So I could, if I were going to manage anything at all, it would not be the mother or the birth. It would be the scene, <laughs> okay? It would be managing the scene, making sure that what comes in is in alignment, and if something isn't, it goes out. That was my job as a midwife. You know, I was never a midwife to ferret out complications. I was never a midwife to prevent complications, all right? Uh, that's, that's not what was not a priority for me at all. My priority was to be invested in you and your transformative journey to birth and to accept all right, and to bring to bear my expertise, anything that that was anything that was yours that came up in your birth, and I will accompany you. All right. And, um, you know, I'm coming as a woman who spent a good 20 years practicing midwifery, oftentimes with um, people who are having large families, uh, people who are quite non resourced. All right. And uh, also people who uh, who were in the, the system who didn't really want what the system, kind of knew what was going to happen when you went into the system to have a baby and they didn't want to do that. So that was mostly my practice. Now, remember, also, I'm not talking about high-risk women. I didn't practice in an inner city crack mom practice or with teen pregnancies or things like that. I might be saying something different if I did. But I'm talking about practicing with normal, healthy women, of which I think, I think the vast majority of people are normal and healthy, all right? And for me, normal and healthy people, they get sick every now and then, they get the flu, they get well, all right? They get depressed every now and then, and they languish for weeks or whatever, but then they they find their way. I think we're all, uh, I think we're all imprinted with the, with the blueprint to find our way, all right? And there's some choice there as to whether you want to do that or how long it will take you to do that, okay, which is not for me to say. But I am used to working with women who find their way, who, you know, I, I don't think women are cupcakes with little sprinkles and cherries on their heads. I think I think we're wise and and powerful creatures who know stuff, all right? And, and our birth is a showcase for that. <laughs> okay. It, it, and I, I, I really, I, I would really like us to look at some of these things about how amazing women are, what the things that they do. With, and it just takes sometimes a little nurturing. All right. Um, not creating a power dynamic. Investment in them. Uh, being willing to, 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 to allow and, and to encourage women to be self-directed, to be trustworthy. See, how, how many women really feel that their caregiver is trustworthy? Uh, all right. I mean, I'm not saying, and I'll repeat myself, this is not about some of the wonderful doctors and midwives and nurses and practitioners who already practice in this very quantum way. It, but, but as I said, it doesn't discount the fact that that's not, that's not the mainstream. That's not the majority. That women are still feeling dissatisfied with their births. Okay? So, all right, what else is a part of a quantum paradigm? Well, common sense. Yeah. I mean, we're not throwing away the system or anyone who works in it, but we're saying let's use the system wisely. The system has not been wise. All right. It's been frantic. Okay. Why? Complications are on the rise. You'll hear that hemorrhage is going up. Do you know that, that some people are, are telling me that five out of 10 women that they work with have a hemorrhage? have a bleed and that what we're doing here is is normalizing complications five out of ten women have a hemorrhage that's that's ridiculous 
I worked for many years in, in, in Georgia and with large families, as I was saying, and many non-resource folk, and I've only seen one hemorrhage. I've only seen one case of fetal distress that we transported for. Do you see what I'm saying? Complications are not normal. And a model of care that normalizes complications and leads women to believe, all right, that complications are normal. It's a last grasp, okay, <laughs> to hold on to a paradigm that isn't working, okay? That top-down hierarchy hierarchical model isn't working that managerial all right caregiver being the center of your birth mat model of care is leaving us now this is not going to be the new normal there is no new normal we are walking into a quantum future okay together together okay so <laughs> what's a girl to do okay so let me go over this quantum paradigm again. Nurturing. Demonstrate nurturing. All right. We've got soul level connections, deepening the relationships that women have. Okay. We have investment, family as the first priority. And I know, I know, and I understand that many practitioners owe their owe allegiance to whoever gave them their license and whatever facility hired them and what their colleagues think of how they practice. And I don't know exactly a way around that. All right. And so if, if that's, if that is what's happening, I totally, I understand it, but I'm just saying move over. There's another caregiver who doesn't have to do that next time. Okay. All right. What else do we have? Self-direction, Affirmation of instinctual responses. We have trust and transparency. No hidden agendas. All right. We also have equitable, beha equitable behavior. As I said, each person treated uniquely. Common sense would be the wise use of technology. The wise use of of the system of medicine that does exist for women who clearly need it, okay? And then last but not least in this paradigm, consciousness, a raising of the consciousness of birth. And if we could do that, okay, if we could raise the consciousness of birth, then we wouldn't have to change anything. Everything would just automatically change. If we raise the consciousness of birth, we just wouldn't do certain things to people. Why? Because it doesn't, it's not an alignment with consciousness. And so all these things that I'm talking about, equitable behavior and the investment and the nurturing and the soul level connections, this is all in favor of raising the consciousness of birth. And if that's not something that you're comfortable with or familiar with, that's okay. But please make room for those who can. All right. So next time we meet, I'd like to talk to you about um, the birth keeper. All right. How to become a professional childbirth consultant and family advocate. All right. Well, thank you for listening. All right. And I look forward to seeing you next Saturday on the bus. <laughs> okay. Be well. Bye.